Throughout the past few months, we've seen many famous investors warn about the dangers of the Federal Reserve's actions over and over again. For example, Ray Dalio, the founder of the largest hedge fund in the world, confidently stated that inflation is coming and warned in March that the Fed may suddenly raise interest rates. Additionally, Michael Burry and Bill Gates actually started selling stocks in anticipation of a market correction. Even Kathy Wood, the CEO and CIO of ARK Invest, predicted that inflation would be at 4% in 2021, significantly higher than the Fed's estimate for inflation of 2.6%. In this video, I will cover how the Federal Reserve has been facing a major division clash, which was highlighted by multiple talks from different Fed members. Additionally, Warren Buffett has also spoken up about this subject by stating that inflation is already here and will simply get worse in the next few months. Welcome to Kazkin's Academy. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing for more content like this and let's get right into it. Most recently, the Federal Reserve released its semi-annual financial stability report, which warned of some major risks that we are facing. While the economy has been rebounding faster than expected, future dangers are on the rise. As a result, the risk in the financial markets is extremely high. The report stated that high asset prices in part reflect a continued low level of treasury yields. However, Valuations for some assets are elevated relative to historical norms, even when using measures that account for treasury yields. In this setting, asset prices may be vulnerable to significant decline should risk appetite fall. The Fed clearly thinks that we are in dangerous territory. The past 12 months marked one of the greatest bull runs in stock market history, and this means that a sudden change in the market sentiment may lead to quote-unquote significant declines. The Fed governor, Lael Brainerd, also explained our current situation in a statement that accompanied the report. She stated that vulnerabilities associated with elevated risk appetite are rising. Valuations across a range of asset classes have continued to rise from levels that were already elevated late last year. The asset classes that she is referring to are somewhat obvious. Stocks, housing, and potentially cryptocurrencies. These assets have only continued to go up, and she thinks that there is danger to that. Brainerd went on to say that the combination of stretch valuations with very high levels of corporate indebtedness bear watching because of the potential to amplify the effects of a repricing event. In other words, a correction is likely going to occur in the asset classes that have gone up substantially already. Personally, I am holding a small portion of gold, crypto, and cash along with my stock portfolio because I believe in today's market climate, we must be ready for anything. Therefore, if a correction occurs, I have the cash to buy the dip. And if inflation spikes up to extremely high levels, I have inflation hedged assets such as stocks, crypto, and gold. This isn't financial advice and is simply what I'm doing, so let me know how you are dealing with this down below. With that being said, there is a lot of uncertainty in the events that could transpire, which leads me to something incredibly strange that has been going on. Over the past few weeks, some suspicious activity has been going on at the Federal Reserve that hints towards a divisive clash going on within the government. For example, one event that was unusually suspicious was when former Fed Chairman Jeanette Yellen admitted that interest rates would need to rise in response to the massive government spending. Um, you know, it may be that interest rates will have to rise somewhat to make sure that our economy doesn't overheat, even though the additional spending is relatively small relative to the size of the economy. So it could cause some very modest increases in interest rates to get that reallocation. But um, these are investments our economy needs to be competitive and to be productive. Shortly after the market crashed due to her warning, Yellen then proceeded to take back what she said in a later interview. In that later interview, she stated that it's not something I'm predicting or recommending. If anyone appreciates the independence of the Federal Reserve, I think that person is me. I don't think there's going to be an inflationary problem, but if there is, the Fed can be counted on to address it. This sudden change in her opinion seems very strange, as she did a full 180 degree turn on what she thinks about inflation and the economy potentially overheating. On the contrary, as I've covered in a previous video, Fed Chair Jerome Powell is not afraid of inflation and doesn't see interest rates rising in the short term. In addition to Powell, Boston Fed President Rosengren recently spoke up about inflation by stating, My view is that this acceleration in the rate of price increases is likely to prove temporary. He explains that supply would catch up to the increased demand. Toilet paper and Clorox were in short supply at the outset of the pandemic, but manufacturers eventually increased supply, and those items are no longer scarce. Many of the factors raising prices this spring are also likely to be similarly short-lived. The Fed Vice Chairman, Richard Clarita, also recently mentioned that the Fed was a long way from their goals and that they want to see actual progress before tapering off. 
On the other side, the Dallas Fed president stated last week that the Fed should start talking about tapering off. Clearly, there seems to be some huge polarization within the Federal Reserve, and as a result, it's difficult to see who we should actually believe. Either way, one thing is for sure, inflation is bound to rise in the short term, and interest rates will eventually rise. The only questions that remain are when these events will occur, and for how long they will occur for. In my opinion, I believe that inflation is bound to increase substantially in the next few months, and full recovery is coming within these months. The most recent unemployment report on May 7th showed that unemployment numbers are still high, but if these numbers start falling, it's just a matter of time until interest rates will rise. Now with that being said, Warren Buffett has warned that inflation is already here, and has already reacted to this change himself. Warren Buffett is unlike the typical fund manager, because he and Berkshire Hathaway as a whole have fully owned businesses. Therefore, Berkshire actually has to manage real businesses. These businesses, which include Geico, Seas Candies, and Duracell, all produce earnings, which Berkshire receives and reinvests from time to time. In Berkshire's 2021 annual meeting, Warren Buffett stated how substantial inflation is already here. In fact, he has actually been raising prices on the products he manages in his fully owned businesses. The consumer response to this has been fantastic, as people are accepting these price increases by continuing to buy Berkshire's products. We're seeing very substantial inflation. It's very interesting. I mean, it, it, we're raising prices. People are raising prices to us. Uh, and it's being accepted. The main driver behind these price increases is the increase in the price of raw materials. Lumber, steel, copper, nickel, and iron are all at record highs, which ruins profit margins and forces businesses to raise prices. Buffett is seeing these raw materials literally go up and up every single day. On the other hand, wages haven't caught up because wages are signed by contracts, which doesn't change day by day. The costs are just up, up, up. Steel costs, uh, you know, just every day, uh, they're, they're going up. And that, it, they're... There hasn't yet been because the wage, the wage stuff follows. I mean, if the, the UAW writes a three-year contract, we got a three-year contract. But if you're buying steel at General Motors uh, or someplace, you're paying more every day. Uh, so uh, it's it's an economy really. Uh, it's red hot. The issue right now isn't just that demand is high due to stimulus checks and unemployment money. Not only is demand high, but supply is also bottlenecking. Most companies weren't expecting this buying frenzy to happen, and it takes time for the supply to start ramping up again. I mean, and we weren't expecting it. I mean, uh, all our companies, when they, they, they thought when, when they were allowed to go back to work, you know, at, at uh, uh, our various operations, they, we closed the furniture stores. I mentioned, you know, they were closed for six weeks or so on average. And they didn't know what was going to happen when they, when they opened up. And, you know, they, they can't stop people from buying things. And we can't deliver them. And they say, well, that's okay. Because nobody else can deliver them either. And we'll wait for three months or something. Of the sort. But the backlog grows. And then we thought it would end when the $600 payments ended. And I think, you know, around August of last year. It just kept going, and it, it keeps going, and it keeps going, and it keeps going. And I get the figures every week I call, or Bumpkin calls me, and we go over day by day what happened at three different stores in Chicago and Kansas City and Dallas, and, and it just won't stop. Uh, people have money in their pocket, and, and they pay the higher prices, and it's, a buy, it's almost a buying frenzy, except certain areas you can't buy yet. You, you know, you really can't buy international air travel. And there's, uh, so the money is being diverted from a little, from a piece of the economy into the rest and everybody's got more cash in their pocket than, except for, meanwhile, you know, it's a terrible situation for a percentage of the people. Price levels are increasing, but not in all parts of the economy. The fact that some parts of the economy aren't fully open yet is creating an uneven environment. Restaurants without takeout or delivery were destroyed, and those with the takeout option thrived. The, you know, this suit, I haven't worn a suit, you know, for a year practically, and that means that the dry cleaner nurse just went out of business. I mean, nobody's bringing in suits uh, to get dry cleaned, and nobody's, nobody's bringing in white shirts uh, to, to get the uh, uh, place where my wife goes. Uh, it, the, the small business person, if you didn't have takeout and delivery services for restaurants, you got killed. 
On the other hand, if you've got takeout facilities, you've done, you know, same source sales of Dairy Queen are up a whole lot, and they adapted. Them. But it's, it, it, it is not a price-sensitive economy right now in the least. And uh, I don't know exactly how when it shows up in different price indices, but there's, there's more inflation going on than quite a bit more inflation going on than people would have anticipated. Of course, not surprisingly, Warren Buffett's right-hand man, Charlie Munger, had to speak up about this. Munger's opinion has been quite controversial, especially regarding Bitcoin and cryptocurrency in general. Unless you were living under a rock, you would know that Munger hates Bitcoin and literally despises any success regarding crypto. Munger is already 97 years old, and some feel that his opinion shouldn't matter because he doesn't understand modern day technology. On the other hand, others think that his vast experience gives his opinion credibility. Personally, I think Munger's opinion about anything related to technology should be taken with a grain of salt because it simply isn't in a circle of competence. On the flip side, when it comes to inflation, his opinion may have more credibility since he has plenty of experience with it. Yeah, and there's one very intelligent man who thinks it's dangerous. And that's just the start. That's right, Charlie Munger thinks that the current inflation rate is dangerous and it's just the start of much more. What's ironic is that one of the common ways to protect against inflation in today's world is to purchase cryptocurrency. Stocks are also a great hedge against inflation, although high inflation can lead to extremely expensive valuations, which is evident today. One major way I am protecting my portfolio against inflation is by purchasing mining stocks. Actually, one mining stock in particular. Mining companies in general have benefited tremendously from inflation due to increasing prices in raw materials created by a supply shortage and inflationary factors. I will cover what this mining stock is and why I believe it's incredibly undervalued in a future video. I am actually looking to double down on my existing position. So if that sounds interesting to you, hit the like and subscribe button for future videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.